Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Welcome on to the school tour. Right? That's what you from Boca Raton. I know this is the worst, but I'm going to ask you guys to stand again. I know it. it's just my habit, right? Just one of those things that I do. God bless. All right, so as usual, close your eyes. I'm going to read you some scripture. Just keep your eyes closed and, and just meditate on what I'm about to say. Amen. Amen. This is in Philippians 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Mm -hmm. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Yes. Then you will experience God's peace, yes. which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father God, we just ask right now that you silence my voice and you speak today. Father God, that my words will fall on the ground, but yours will live and give life in Jesus' name. Prepare our hearts to receive what you have for us. I pray a prophetic movement and atmosphere right now. Help us to receive what it is that you have in store for us this morning. Don't let me or anyone in, his, in this room limit what you have to say this morning. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Oh, wooden chairs. It's dope. It's dope. It's a throwback. Did anybody have to do this in school? Did anybody do this? Or, the, or this, right? The both of them? That just means be quiet. <laughs> Guys, I don't need to tell you that we've been having a very weird, difficult season. And, and what's funny is that it, it seems like, yes, as a church, but also as individuals, that everyone's story is, is so unique and so crazy, and it's... Even in my own life, I see that what God is doing is just insane, and we all seem to be in this season of uncertainty. Does, can anybody agree with that uncertainty? Where sometimes you don't, you don't know what's going to be happening, right? We have to, as Pastor said, we log in onto our Facebook to see where we're going to be meeting this week. We don't know where we're going to be as a congregation. Sometimes some of us, some of us are going through some stuff we don't know what we're going through in our own lives, and so we're just asking God, God, what, what are you doing? And the thing is, I'm not. If you know me at all, and you've maybe heard me preach, you heard me admit to you guys that I, I don't like uncertainty. I suffer from like anxiety and stress. And so oftentimes what I find myself doing is just stressing out if I don't know exactly what's happening in my life, right? I need to have a game plan. I'm that person that needs to know exactly where my feet are gonna land when I wake up in the morning. And so when I don't know what's going on, I'm stressed out. You understand, you feel me? Does anybody get stressed out? Right? Yeah. If you have a bill and you don't have the money, you don't know where it's going to come from, you stress out. That's called not uncertainty. You get it? Right? And that's kind of what we're going through as a congregation. And I've always suffered from this, even as a child. I'm going to let you in. And I, don't, I don't know if I was going to... All right. I don't want to tell the story, but I'm going to tell it. <laughs> and what's going to happen is... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Don't call me the name that I'm going to tell you what people used to call me, okay? Because if you do... Lord help you. I might not be Christian, okay? Punch it right in the throat. Okay? Check it out. When I was a kid, right, I spent a lot of my time in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Woo -woo. Anybody? Woo -woo. Yeah. Well, see, I told y'all we was alive in here. The Bronx. Anyway, so my grandmother lived in this, uh, what, at the time it was a brand new complex and slash uh, project. Anyway, uh, called La Cabanas. Anybody, La Cabanas? Um, <laughs> us New York Ricans, right, because we have to merge English and Spanish, we call it La Cabanas. Anyway, right, so we had to put at least one English word in that title. And this is where I was given the nickname and tag on my very first day there, uh, Yogurt. So yogurt, remember that. But if you call me yogurt, I promise you right now, I'm punching you in the throat. So I was given the nickname yogurt because from what I can remember, anybody saw Spaceballs? I guess there was a character named Yogurt, and I, yeah, and I, but FYI, Johnny told me that to say this, my brother told me, don't say this, don't admit this, but I thought Spaceballs was Star Wars, guys. I didn't know that was like a joke. 
So as a kid, I'm like, that's Star Wars, dude. His name is Yogurt. Everybody knows that. So they call me Yogurt as a joke, and it stuck with me for years. That's also where I met my friend. His name was Martin, by the way. Very logical name. But we call him Coco. I don't know why. His name was Coco. Not Coco. Coco. You had to have a little bit of a Spanish accent when you said it. The same way that we live very close to Graham Street. But we called it Graham, right? It's pronounced Graham, guys. But our grandmother called it Graham, and we called it Graham. She didn't say, do you want a Graham cracker? She said, you want a Graham cracker? But she called Graham Avenue or Graham Street Graham. That's what we called it. By the way, uh, there's a quiz, you need to know Graham, Yogurt, Coco, okay? <laughs> Forget the verses that I'm saying. <laughs> now, Coco was kind of like my frenemy. You guys that have any frenemies? That guy or that girl you hang out with and you kind of, they're always challenging you and you're like, oh, man, we're going to fight one day, for sure. That's where Coco was. He was a couple of years older than me, so Coco was that guy for me. He lived on the first floor. I lived, my grandma lived on the fifth. Coco and I had many adventures. Little Coco and Yogurt. We used to cruise around Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I was looking for trouble slash trying to scrape up some money. We just wanted to buy handballs from the corner store and wiffle balls. Anybody play wiffle ball? Thank you. We used to stuff the, the wiffle bats with newspaper and then duct tape it. Right? That was my life. Anyway, so that's what we were doing. Now, the magical thing happened where this complex, the Cabana, right? decided to build this playground in between two of the project areas, and they called it the plaza. It was a lab. Now, when you're seven or eight years old and you see a brand new playground, it's, it's life. No one slid down. I could be the very first, right? This plaza was shut for almost six months before they opened it. I'm pretty sure it was D.O.B. <laughs> so if you don't know, D.O.B. shut us down, right? We, like, that joke failed. <laughs> don't make fun of D.O.B. Okay, okay, so we won't make fun of D.O.B., but they, so I'm pretty sure it was D.O.B. who didn't allow it to open. So now imagine six, seven years old, eight years old, was whatever, ten. We want to play in the playground, and it's closed. So we did what any Christian... God-fearing, loving child would do, we hop that gate. Amen? Right. So now check this out. This Notice I said gate. It wasn't a fence, people. It was a gate. It was a gate that went up 70,000 feet in the air, and it had spikes on the top so it could be like, no sane kid will jump on this gate, hop it, and get stabbed, and, you know, just hang on their skin, right? So don't do that. Coco and I were like, nah, forget that. So we're climbing. Going up was amazing. It was like easy. Now I'm on top. And I literally see, it's like I'm on a roller coaster. I could see just people like this. And I'm going, no. Nope. Right and now I'm shaking on the, on the top spike, just holding it. Coco, who was a little older than me, was a little more bold, was on the other side. And he was already in the bottom like, yo, yo, Bert, just jump. It's not that high. And I'm looking at him. If I jump, yeah, like, I just felt like in my mind, if I jump, I would fall and my spine would come out of my head because it was that high. Like, no, I'm not going to die. We'll slide on that another day. I'm going to go back down. No, 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 you've already got there. You're halfway. It's so close. Just jump. I said, okay, go, go, fine. And I would jump. If this happened once, that'd be... Fine. What a great story. You guys will laugh at me. You know Coco. You know Yogurt. Right? You know all these things about me. But it didn't happen once. In that six-month period, we did it at least once a week. It happened every time. And not just once that time, because I had to go back. The gate didn't suddenly open when we got in. I had to climb the gate again. Another half an hour for me to jump the gate again. <laughs> just jump. Oh, my God. Just jump. It's not that high. And I'm like, yo, Coco, I promise you when I get down... I'm going to come down with the people's elbow. Bah! I'm going to fight you every time. The first time it happened, Coco was nice. He actually climbed back up. and like, we can do this. Come on. And we climbed down and then jumped. Now, here's the deal. I've recently visited that uh, area. That gate was maybe six, seven feet high. At best. I probably could have just jumped in. Been fine. In fact, I, every time I, I did just jump in, I was fine. So it wasn't very high. But the problem was if I didn't know where my feet were going to lay. So 
every time I, I got to that place, I will go through that journey, the destination was somewhat clear, but how I was going to get there was unclear. Every time, I would be fearful, I'd tremble, and I'd hold on to that gate. Praying, I could just go back. Praying that I would get rescued. Praying that my mom would come get me. Praying that something would change. And every single time, yo, yo, Kurt, just jump. It's not that high. You see, if you're like me, that's your life too. A couple of weeks ago, man, I'm telling you another story. A couple of weeks ago, I was eating uh, dinner with my wife, and we went to Panera. Write that down. Panera? That's <laughs> Panera? Coco? Coco? Yogurt? 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 Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. The Plaza? La Cabana, La Cabana. So we're at Panera, we're eating dinner, and we're having this really deep conversation, and we're at, and, and, and it's becoming like an intimate conversation where we're really getting into our fears and our, what we're, we, you know, we're talking about the future, right? You ever have those? And for whatever reason, oftentimes when my wife ha and I have these kind of conversations, sometimes it can go south. Like, it can kind of lead to depression, almost, like, because you start thinking, man, but how the heck are we going to get all the stuff that we want, right? How do we... And you start thinking about everything you don't have and the journey that it'll take to get it, right? So you think, man, I thought by now I'd be a movie star. If I don't get it, why I'm not on TNT, you know? Why nobody wants to know about me? I thought by now I'd be shredding on the top of a mountain, getting paid to do so. And I'm not doing that. So I'm like, God. So I'm starting to doubt. God, come on. What do you have for me? How, how come I have these passions inside of me, but no way to you know, fulfill them, no way to get to that final destination or to that destination that you've get, clearly given me that I feel like I've been running towards for years of my life. And as I'm complaining in my mind, all of a sudden God stops me and says, you know what, maybe those things, those dreams, they're not just your desires. They're the things that I've placed, that I've placed inside of you. You see, dreams... You gotta understand about some of the visions that we have, right? Sometimes when you think about like a pastor, do you think that you would wanna be a pastor? Who in there right now wants to be a pastor? Just in the stair. Take a look at this room and ask yourselves, dude, I don't wanna deal with these people on a weekly basis and the junk that, and, the, and then he has the stress about all these things, but yet he felt like, God, I think I wanna be a pastor. That's not him, that's God saying, that's what I have called for you. And that passion all of a sudden develops and you start getting the know-how and then God starts preparing you, right? Those are the things that God gives you. He's placing that inside of you. He says, I'm preparing you for something, son. Mm. Don't worry about the destination. I'm getting, I'm going to get you there. Mm. You see, in Psalm 55, we read about David. Now, I want, I want to make something clear because I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell the story because I, I, you guys know I'm kind of obsessed with David, right? So, so David is, wrote this psalm, but we don't really know. See, the Bible's pretty clear about not really knowing the time frame of when this was written or what it was written about. But we know that when we read it, we read some, a lot of vulnerability from David. Okay, So I want to warn you, I can't tell you exactly what the context is, right? Now, scholars, theologians, believe that it might have something to do with the fact that if you read about David in 2 Samuel 15 through 18, let me give you that, 2 Samuel 15 through 18, they're going to read that at some point David, one of his confidants, one of his people, his advisors, his advisors betrayed him and his son, right, and, and, and his advisor and, his, and David's son basically stole the, the, the kingdom from him and, and kind of kicked David and I was like, peace out, shan, boom, right, and they, and they kind of played David, right, so it's, it's, it's thought that it might be about that, but even if it's not, I want you to check this out, okay? I'm going to read it to you. It's kind of long, but we're going to get through it. Psalm 55, 1 says, Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my cry for help! Exclamation point. Please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed by my troubles. So right away, David has become vulnerable, and I immediately feel his pain because I go through it too. So now all of a sudden, this David that we read about throughout the Bible, right, this man of God who, yes, has made mistakes, but is ultimately glorified by preacher after preacher after preacher, is now admitting, I'm overwhelmed by my troubles. Sound familiar? 
Do we get overwhelmed by our troubles? He says, he's crying for help and says, God, I need you to listen and answer me, which is telling me he feels distant from God. He feels like God is not there. So he's saying, God, can you hear me? And then when you hear me, I need you to respond. How many of us know that God ain't ain't far? But sometimes we distance ourselves from him, right? We feel like he's not there, but he is. So he's crying for help. It says, my enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me. I can't stop shaking. It almost sounds like me at the top of the fence, trembling. I can't stop shaking. He's admitting he's scared. He's admitting that he is overwhelmed, that his fear and his anxiety is getting the best of him. He's asking, where are you, God? Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and rest. I would fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I would escape far from this wild storm of hatred. He wants to get away from his problems. This man of God is not saying, I wish I could just be far away from here. Some people might translate it as, I I wish I could die. I wish I could just go with you, God. I wish I didn't have to deal with this nonsense. I wish I didn't have to deal with the day-to-day struggle, this life of uncertainty, the things that I'm going through. I wish it wasn't there, God. You're not alone. David felt that way, too. You know, in verse 20, it says, As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. He's talking about a a friend who betrayed him. That's That's why it's thought that it could be about his best friend. We don't know. But imagine such heartache, such betrayal, that your best friend would hurt you like that. To the point that he's shivering and trembling and he's fearing his own life. In verse 22 it says, God, give your burdens to the Lord and he would take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young. And I am trusting you to save me. Even in the midst of his most fearful moment, he says, but God, I trust you. But God, I know you'll get me through this. But God, no matter how high I am, I know you'll be there. You'll get me through. In verse 17, it says, Morning, noon, and night, I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. All of a sudden, he goes from, You can't hear me, God. You have to answer me to all of a sudden he knows. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've been there all along. You were there. In my most difficult moments, in my most feared moments, you're there. It is in our human nature to need a plan, a sense of purpose. If I'm going to jump, I need to know where I'm going to land. If I'm going to follow that, I need to know where you're going to take me. God is telling us today, it's not a secret. There is no mystery. It is in my word. You will land on solid ground. You know, I believe that in this season, don't worry, I'm, I'm coming actually to a close. I don't like preaching for too long, so don't worry. I know it's been like an hour and a half. Don't worry. I believe that in this next season, God is calling us to be radical believers. Just as David believed, I believe that the things that are impossible in this next season will be possible. 
I believe that what DOB has declared a lost cause, I declare it as a victory. I believe that what your income and what your title, your job title says you are, it doesn't determine your victory no longer. I see in this next season, this is a this is this, God's been speaking to me a lot about prophetic prophetically about this season, this church, and the individuals within the church, amen, and within this congregation. I see homes. You understand? Homes like uh, all of a sudden you own your house. Right? So I see closings one after another, after another, after another. I mean, we're not talking about I need government help. We're not talking about I need, uh, I'm going to go into foreclosure in a year. We're talking about ownership. Ownership. Right? I see condos. I see homes owned. I see cars owned and paid off in this next season. Right? I see high level education. I see people graduating from school. Maybe that's just spiritual, but I believe in the physical, too. I see schooling. I see college graduates. I see doctors. I see master's degrees. I see bachelor's degrees. I see it happening in this next season. I see this path of uncertainty turning into a road of, oh, my God. God. I see victory over seemingly dead situations, even relationships. I see victory over relationships that are dead in your life, but you think there's no fixing that one. I see God saying, watch this, fix. I see restoration, I see peace, I see prosperity. Very, very clearly. And in this season, if you're in the season of holding and you're asking God, I see it, right? Because we've been talking a lot about what's coming, but you're saying, but how am I gonna get there? There's this long, Black empty gap. There's a 70 foot sense, but you got a little cocoa down there going, Yo, it's not that high. It's not that high. Just jump. I hear God saying, What I have for you, TSF, is uncontrollable, unstoppable, and unshakable. Today, if you're like me and you're worried about where your feet may land, then remember what I read to you when the start of this thing. You see, in Philippians 4, 6, we, we read, don't worry about anything, right? He said, pray about everything. Well, I want you to get a little bit of history, because we, Pastor George preached about this a couple of months back, but I want to hit you with it again. That's actually from Paul. Paul wrote that in a letter from jail, from prison. You understand? Have you ever been in jail and prison, anybody? Right? Have you felt like, yeah, I'm going to encourage somebody from prison? <laughs> I can tell you that I probably would not feel like, yeah, I'm going to send a letter of encouragement back to my family for going to prison for something that I probably shouldn't be in here for. For simply believing in the gospel, all of a sudden, I'm in prison. And he's writing words of encouragement to his people. Letters that will last thousands of years and encourage us to this very day. Amen. From prison, he says, don't worry about anything. Amen. Instead, pray about everything. Yes. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Amen. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live. Christ Jesus. Today, family, I believe that God is saying it's time to take that jump that I promise you your feet will land. And I promise you that space is not that high. And this morning, we want to do things a little bit different because we haven't had the opportunity to really do this because of space and confinement issues. But today, God has blessed us with this little altar here, right? And so this morning, with it today, I believe that there's a prophetic movement. So I want to call the, the, the prayer team up, and I believe that there's prophecy here today. And today I believe there's confirmation that's going to be given out to you individually this morning. I believe that there are certain things that you're believing for, that you're seeing God giving you, and you see it, but you don't know how, how it's going to happen. God's saying this morning, I'm going to confirm it in you this morning. It's not that high, just jump. You're not far away. 
you're one block away. Amen. Just jump. Amen. So this morning, why don't you stand? And if you feel led, come to the front, and I believe God has a word for you this morning. Amen. Father God, right now, I just pray that your, your people may be ready to receive what you have in store. Right now, a rebuke block. Those brick walls, those cinder block walls that we're building that's getting in the way of what you have for us, I destroy them right now in the name of Jesus. Crash down right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, I believe, Father God, that you will begin to bless in a way that they cannot even imagine. And I pray that this morning, Father God, your will be done. A prophetic movement right now. Right now in Jesus' name. There are some of you standing here right now that you're already hearing God speak to you. You don't even need anyone to pray for you. God's saying, that's it. That's it. That's confirmation. You can feel that fire in your belly already where God is saying, I confirm it. That vision, that plan, that purpose, it's done. That plan, that purpose for this congregation, for this church, it's already in action in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just stay where you are. I just want to leave this place worshiping God. If you're still out there, you need to just come forth just as a just to symbolize that Lord, Lord, I'm one of those that He's been talking about. And I just need you in my life, and you can just come. We still have a lot of room.
just want to greet you all and thank you all for being here with us. We also want to let you know that TFS Español is still in motion. We have a worship team that has been rehearsing. We have a core team that has been meeting. We have people that have been praying. And we're just waiting in anticipation for that day to start. But for us, it has started already in our hearts. So if you have a Spanish-speaking person in your family or your neighborhood, community, co-worker, that has always told you, I would love to go to your church, but I don't speak English, now you have something to go back and tell them, well, guess what? Say, habla español. We don't have an official start date yet. We're looking at sometime after Easter, but once we get back into the actual building, TSF, we will be making the announcement to start. But please continue to pray. Please continue to reach out to your grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, cousin, uncle, son, nephew, whatever it is. If they need to hear the word in Spanish, if that's what's the only, if that's the only thing holding them back, there's nothing holding them back anymore. Okay? So we want you to continue praying for myself, to pray for Alice and the rest of the team as well. Because our goal is to see people come to Christ. The language is secondary. The main thing is to see souls come to Christ. Amen? Joy, oh God, ready to spread it, oh God. But you have blessed us to be a blessing. 